Welcome to Far From Eden. It continues to astound me how clueless women are about men. And yet, they're trying to get one, <laughs> for lack of a better term. I mean, that seems to be what they're trying to do. They're out there trying to find the good men. They're out there trying to figure out how to get them to commit. But as we know from good old 304, type it in a calculator, turn it upside down, math, uh, you might just be in the sleeper section, thinking you're in a keeper section or thinking you can get to a keeper section. We covered that on, uh, I think it was his levels. He's, he's a genius. Anyway, you know, they, they just keep on complaining about the men. They keep on wondering where they all are, etc. So here we have an article that was published July 25th, 2024, by a person named T, T-E-E, -E, Mugai, I have no idea, M-U-G-A-Y-I. And this is a man, so I find it extra interesting. The title of this article is, 14 women share their dating struggles that are bound to surprise many men. So women are having dating struggles. We all know it's not difficult for a woman to get a date. We all know it's not difficult for a woman to find a man who is willing to sleep with her. That is easy. What women are struggling with is to get a Chad or a Tyrone to commit. At the end of the day, that's what they're complaining about. There are so many great men out there who are average, which now I guess is an insult. It's not good enough for these amazing, wonderful boss babes that should be in such high demand. You know, aren't you interested in her advanced degree? Aren't you impressed by how many hours she's put in at work? No, you're not. And the thing is, these women who are struggling to find a date or get a man to commit, they don't bother to find out who men even are. They will, out of one side of their mouth, say, oh, I'm, you know, looking for where all the good men are. And out of the other side of their mouth, absolutely bash, emasculate, insult, accuse, right? And then be like, well, I don't know why. Anyway, so let's find out what these women have to say and what T thinks about it. Is he going to be a simp? Is he going to be, is he a Chad? I don't know. 14 women share their dating struggles that men are bound, that are bound to surprise many men. These women are offering valuable insights on what not to do when dating. <laughs> is that their intention? Do they mean to do that or is it just inadvertent? Prob I don't know if it's intentional, maybe. The inception of dating apps and social media has brought about one of the most contentious environments known to humankind. It's getting to the level of po politics and religion in terms of the divisiveness it creates. And I would imagine some of those politics are actually seeping in because we know that women by and large are way more to the left and, and moving more that way and men are more to the right, more conservative and moving more that way. Anyway, studies have shown that with Gen Z. As a side note, I'm sure that's not helping. On the one hand, you have men complaining about how modern dating has become an important feat and that women are too demanding. While on the other, you have women clapping back saying that dating for them is not all sunshine and roses as some men think. I don't think that men think that. I think men think that it's just way easier for you guys to get a date. You don't get, you know, berated. If, if you come on to somebody, 
it's easy for you to find somebody for hanky panky. Whereas the landscape for an average man is bleak. The landscape for an average woman in dating has never been better as far as dating goes. They just don't want anyone that they think is less than them. He goes on, being a man myself, it's easier to relate to the plight of other men. After all, I can only experience dating from the male vantage point. But with the likes of Reddit, this need not be the way. There is a ask women, ask women thread titled, what is the most difficult aspect in dating for you aside from security concerns? They put it right in there. It's, do you see that? Do you see what they did? They just put, maybe they wanted to weed it out so women weren't all answering, oh my gosh, men are dangerous. Oh my gosh, men are dangerous, etc." But that in just in the title, it 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 means that all men are a threat, and they're not. There is a small section of men who are bad, who are criminals. They hurt other men. They hurt women. They are bad people, and they hurt everybody. Stop painting all men with that brush. I realized this author did not do it. It was the Reddit threat. <sighs> what is the most difficult aspect in dating for you aside from security concerns? That I find eye-opening. It provides, oh, he finds that eye-opening. It provides some enlightening commentary about dating directly from women themselves. Always keep in mind whenever you're like, oh, I heard from women themselves. Always keep in mind that they may not be saying the truth or the whole truth. Keep that in mind. Even if it's on Reddit, they're always, we are always thinking about how we look. I have handpicked the top 14 most insightful comments to share today so that we as men and women too, can understand what dating is like from the other side. This way, we can all learn what to do and what not to do when connecting with each other. He sounds like he's really trying to bridge that communication gap. Few men want marriage without kids. I think that is an absolute shock to most women. I really do. I think it's a sh it's shocking to most women. I watched a lot of Kevin old Kevin Samuels by now. It's it's old, you know, cuz we lost him just a few years ago, but it seems like forever. But you could see whenever he would point out that a woman was past her ability to give a man children or just flat out didn't want to have any more children, you know, after she's had somebody else's um, they were shocked that maybe a man wouldn't be interested in marrying them because they wouldn't give him children. And they were shocked. And I, I really think that most women have no idea how important children are to men who would, who do want to get married. It's, it's shocking. They think it's all about just being in that sort of let's have a honeymoon forever. And I think that's why their expectations are so high and why inevitably they are unhappy because they didn't get into it for the, with the idea of family. They didn't get into it. They're not getting into these relationships. Women are not getting into these relationships with the idea of giving of themselves, of, of creating something. It's unfortunately too much of an attitude of what am I going to get out of this? What is this relationship going to do for me? What is this person going to do for me? How is he going to enhance my life? And that's not a reason to have a relationship at all with or without children. But nobody has told the women folk this, apparently. Nobody told them when they were five years old, uh, it's not all about you and what you get. 
he goes on. Oh, this is, yeah, he said, few men want marriage without kids. So this is the, the first woman account of her issues with dating. Finding a guy who's open to marriage but doesn't want kids. I'd be all right with someone 10 to 12 years older who's done having kids, though. I guess I deal with it by being upfront with every guy, telling him that I won't be having kids ever. And that is from Broken Cat Lady. I am not making that up. <laughs> that's her. That's what she goes by. So she's up front with them saying, I won't be having kids ever. Well, just that, like, I think you're bi. <laughs> but at least she's up front with her attitude. The author of the article goes on. I'm not going to lie. This one will be one tough cookie to crack for Broken Cat Lady. The reason most people get married in the first place is to start a family. I don't think that's true for women necessarily. I really don't. Um, I really don't. At least these these women in the dating in the dating pool, the ones that doing online dating, the ones with the high body counts, all that kind of stuff. Those ones having a family, making a family. I, that's not what they're doing it for. It's clear, clearly not what they're doing it for. The evidence is in front of our faces. So stating you are not looking for kids puts you at a disadvantage. That's why you rarely see many married couples who are child free by choice. That's true. A lot of married couples, um, there's not that many, what do they call them, dinks? Uh, dual income, no kids. They want to make that a thing. You know, the propagandists, overlords, people pulling the strings want to make it a thing so more people will do it you know, less population, etc. But when, when men get married, they have, you know, there's a reason men have a point. Okay. The next, the next woman's issue, deep conversations seem like a lost art. <laughs> Clicking with someone on a conversational level, it's surprisingly rare even though I'm a pretty good conversationalist and like to think I can talk to anyone once I get going. Mm. Celestialism. Okay. That's from her. Here's another one. Agreed. Most of the time I have to carry the conversation as well. At this point, I tell them they are boring to their face and leave. Even if it's halfway through a date, I'd rather be called rude and suffer through any more of that. Oh my God, that is so rude. You'd rather be called rude. Are you okay with being rude? Then suffer through any more of that? You know why Raving Squirrel, that's who that's from, Raving Squirrel 11. You know why you think it's boring, sweetie cakes? It's because it's not about you. You know what my mother used to tell me? She would tell me, only boring people get bored. I thought that was a good one. Raving Squirrel 11. Okay, next one. It seems like asking someone to give you more than a one-word reply is too much work. That's from Medium Stomach 1988. Asking someone to give you, ask better questions. Like, uh, you've obviously, I think that if that's happening, if a man is giving you one word answers, there's a reason. And maybe it's not that he's the problem. Maybe you're not asking good questions. Maybe you're off putting, maybe you, it's like you're cross examining him and he's like, Whoa, you know, slow down on them, you know, masculinity and attacking me. They don't want to look inward. So far, we, we were barely in here and reading these comments from these women. And it's, it's, all, it's not their fault. Okay. The author says, even as a guy, I sometimes find conversations with other men difficult. More specifically, when emoting and deep introspection are required. Chalk this one up to socialization. Um, 
maybe. I think that men are just different. And when women are talking to them, they need to remember they're talking to a man. And you're not talking to another woman. You can't expect the same type of communication. You can have wonderful communication. You just have to learn how to speak to a man. It's not difficult at all. It's, it's really not. I, I have no problems. Boys are not taught to be expressive to the extent girls are, hence why conversations can seem a bit, a tad bit stifled. I disagree with the author here. Um, believe me, they are trying to teach boys to emote and express and feel, right? Stop trying to make boys be girls, right? Stop trying to make, you need to be a bit stoic. We just went over this actually. I think, I think I released the video last Sunday where I was reacting to Bjorn Andreas Bolhansen of Norway, who was talking about how men are not, they're darned if they do and they're darned if they don't when they express their feelings. They know this. So it's, it basically, yeah, you gotta stop expecting men to be women and telling them they're wrong if they're not. You're, a man's not gonna be vulnerable with you when he first meets you. And that's not a fault. It's not a fault of his. It's not something that he necessarily should be doing. And honestly, you wouldn't respect him if he, if he was. You, you women wouldn't respect him if he was. You know it. That being said, being terrible at conversation is no excuse. It's a skill like any other, given that free resources online, the free resources online, anyone can learn to be better. Yeah, that's true. But again, I, I'm going to push back because I think a lot of these women uh, get bored or think he's not a good conversationalist when it is all about her and she wants him to show interest in her work, in her this, what have you. And if she's monopolizing the conversation, that's not good either. Their next complaint Guys are not looking for anything serious. That's a good one. Finding a man who actually wants a relationship. I kept coming across men who wanted to hook up, so I stopped dating apps. Stop using dating apps. That's from abbreviations mean 578. Yeah. Men put you in a category. And they might be the type that isn't looking for a relationship. That could be true. You might be choosing ones that are players. That's a small little segment of men who want that and also can do that because those two things are rare. They're not looking for anything serious. Yeah, maybe with you. <laughs> Sorry, so bad. They make it so easy. They make it so easy. Finding a man who'd be down for a relationship, not just hooking up and whatnot. That's from Peak Representative 14. Again, same same thing. And we learned from we learned from 304 math. You you might be a sweeper. That's where you're just, you know, oops, or just pump and dump, as they say. Okay, the author. The author gives his take. I will go out on a limb and say, I don't believe most men are out there just looking to hit it and quit. I know, exactly. I feel the problem is women are more readily going after a specific type of guy, the cool looking, confident and charismatic types, or dare I say, the bad boys. Yeah, and yeah, exactly the type I was saying, like these few, men who can be players and who would want to be players because most men are not that way. Women are taught that you guys are that way. I grew up thinking that that's what men, that's all men want, et cetera, et cetera. Boy, have I been, oh, I've learned. That is not who you guys are. These are the types of guys who have options because they are attractive to many women or they pursue women more aggressively. 
So yeah, most of them won't settle down since they don't have to. Paradoxically, it's the guys who struggle with attracting women who are more likely to jump into a relationship with the first girl that shows them interest, even though that's not the guy women yearn for. It, it breaks my heart because it's so, it's so wrong. Okay, the next complaint. Boundaries are often ignored. Okay, the first chick talks about that. When I was dating, it was mostly finding someone that I actually clicked with and didn't try to bulldoze their way through my boundaries. I dealt with it by removing myself from the dating market for years. Well, that's vague. How can we even respond to that? Your boundaries? What are your boundaries? Maybe, maybe. I have no idea. We can't respond to it because she's unclear. That was from Titchy Peach. <laughs> and the author says, I cannot vouch whether this is a men problem or a people problem. That's a very diplomatic way to put it. I was I was tempted to use the word that remind, rhymes with witch because that just bulldoze their way through my boundaries. Oh, I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter because not respecting boundaries regardless of gender is a symptom of having little to no emotional intelligence. Right, but you're assuming that her boundaries are clear and reasonable and that, that's, that this is even a thing. Because she said she removed herself from the dating market for years. Whenever they say that, I'm always like, mm, did you though? Or did, you, did the ones you want not want you? I learned a lot from the Godfather. Whenever someone states they don't like something and then you go ahead and do that very thing, well, there's a clearer message that person doesn't have empathy nor care about you. That's true. But again, I got to take what she said with a grain of salt because I just, I call, uh, my, my BSO meter is just kind of going off on that one. Okay, next complaint from women. It's hard to tell what men are after. Hmm. Knowing someone's true intentions, haven't figured out a solution yet. Maybe ask them. Maybe don't sleep with them right away. Maybe get to know them. Good Lord. <sighs> Next lady comments on about not knowing what's, what men are after. On the surface, compatibility. The true issue, so many dudes who will lie through their teeth to get their gentleman's stick wet. Okay. Again, you are, you are going after these certain guys. Like, they, have, they're, they cannot discern. They're awful at discerning. Because this is not, that's not most men. The author comments on these chicks. I bet this girl is talking about unwittingly getting used for hanky panky. It's almost always the case when the conversation about expectations comes up like this. Yeah, they complain about that a lot. And we've been uh, propagandized to think that that's all you guys want. So I think that we project this a lot onto you guys when maybe there's something else going on. And he goes on to say, and I hate to admit that this is almost exclusively a problem with men. A lot of us lie, uh, lie to get hanky panky and we will string the girl along by making it seem we want something serious with her only to flip the script later. Sad to say online dating has only exacerbated this problem such that a massive chunk of matches women receive are guys looking to get hanky panky. Yeah, because that's where that's the 304 market online dating. That's what they're doing. And, uh, you know what you got to do, ladies, if this is a complaint of yours, close your legs. It weeds out those guys. Just close your legs. Those guys won't be interested in you. Stop. See, these women are trying to trap these men. by The women are stringing the men along, too, by offering up the hanky-panky, thinking it's going to turn into a relationship. They're both playing games. But the problem is that women pretend to be these, you know, innocent 
flowers that, you know, they're just looking for a relationship and I'm being taken advantage of. It's like, no, you're using hanky panky to try to like entice him or train him or trick him or, you know, get him to do what you want. And then you play the victim when he doesn't. And it's like, come on, don't act like you had this wholesome, beautiful thing. You, you didn't, you know, you, you got to stop. Women have got to stop sleeping with men so early and then complaining that that's all he wanted. Well, that's all you gave and that's all you have to give. So it, it's a real problem. And they, and it's their fault, women's fault, but they don't take accountability for it at all. And even this man right here is blaming men too for that. And, and he has also been trained to take it on. Oh, it's us. That's a, we're just a bunch of hound dogs, etc. No, you're not. All right. Next complaint, low effort online dater, daters galore. Finding a guy who catches my interest on dating apps. Most have two pictures and no text, which isn't appealing to me. I'd like to read a text so their personality shines through a little before I text them. Party Dimension 2692. Okay, your, your name is Party Dimension. <laughs> this response could have easily been written by a guy, right? I've seen the dating thing, the dating profiles that women put up, and I'm like, they don't say anything about themselves anymore. Well, maybe not the part about not finding attractive people on dating apps, but everything else after that. Dating apps, low barrier to entry is always going to attract people who put in the least effort. That's just the nature of the beast. The best anyone can do is ignore such profiles. Right. Just ignore it. Next complaint. <laughs> Too many are preoccupied with body counts. Oh my goodness, you picky, picky men. How dare you have such expectations? This is a hilarious one. Too many are preoccupied with body counts. What do these women say about this? Before I met my partner, for me, it was finding a guy who didn't care about body count. I was a virgin and pretty much every guy I went out with would get oddly excited about me being a virgin. I guess they fetishized it or something. Anyway, it creeped me out. So I never lasted with any of them past the first date. Brunette skeleton. They, they, they don't fetishize it. They're shocked by it. And it's a wonderful thing. Purity is very attractive. God. God, this lady. Okay. And, he's, and that's the only one. That's the only one we get about body count is this one virgin. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, he must have skipped over some real juicy ones. No pun intended. That's gross. I'm surprised this is a big enough problem that Burnett Skeleton felt compelled to post about it. Yeah, exactly. That's a baloney. She's bragging. She's bragging. She's bragging. I was a virgin and so many people wanted me, but I just couldn't, I just, after every date, I was like, nope, nope, nope. That's, that's what she's doing. Female flexes are hidden. They're not obvious, but that's what that is. It's a female flex. He goes on to say, but I shouldn't be given how this obsession by men with women's number of past hanky panky partners has been gaining traction over the past few years. Thanks to online movements, such as the red pill. Oh, we found a simp. Simp detector. Boop, boop. Uh-huh. Obsession by men with women's number of past partners. Yeah. It's not an obsession. It's not an obsession. It's just that men are, for the first time that I'm aware of, finally saying, we don't like that. They've never liked it all throughout history. This is not a new obsession, dude. Come on. Why is he being so dishonest? You guys, what do you think? What is he, what's he trying to do? Does he, I mean, does he not care? I don't know. I'm starting to question this guy. And he goes on, ladies, anytime a guy starts harping about body count, run like they do on Friday the 13th and don't look back. 
you guys. What is, what is up with this guy? Unless he is a virgin saving himself for the marriage bed, no guy with his head screwed on straight should care about your past like that. Wrong. Wrong. If they don't care about your past like that, they don't value purity. That is a sign of a lack of character in them. Honestly. Now, if they're, okay, let's say they're a, a felon of a violent crime. They've been incarcerated and they got out of jail. They've got a sketchy past. Okay. Maybe that guy is going to be a little less uh, strict in his viewpoint on body count because he says to himself, well, I have a past that's a certain thing and I'm reformed and I'm looking at you. And if you are sort of reformed from all of that, then let's move on together. That I can understand a little bit more, but no, don't just expect a man to, to accept your body count. No, he run like this man. What do you think? Are all the girls going to contact you because you're fine with it. I just, I don't believe that. Are there really men out there who are just fine with it and, and think that you shouldn't care? Cause to me, that's gross, but you know, I'm, I'm puritanical. <laughs> okay. Next one. Nothing but a parade of rejections. <laughs> okay. What does that mean? Finding a man I am attracted to. Christ, it's a wasteland, a desert, barren. Then I find the one guy I find attractive and my attraction pingers don't really ping too often. So I am smitten. Okay, I see what she's saying. So if she finally finds one she's attracted to. Like, ah, yeah, only to find out they don't really like me that way, but would be thrilled to sleep with me. You're not a keeper. Having to detach myself from any outcome because it's usually just disappointment. So then I get to bed sad, rejected, and get to do it all over again because I don't want, I don't just want to be the one you call for a good time. It's tiresome. If you are a woman and you keep finding that men just want to sleep with you, you might be giving out, you might be that type of woman that gets put in that category. And so you have to ask yourself, why am I put in that category by these men? Am I looking at the wrong men for me? Are these men out of my league? And that's why I'm not a keeper for them. Maybe I need to be looking for men on my own level. And maybe those men would look at me like I'm a keeper, right? Or maybe you come off as just very uh, like, like that you're a 304. Maybe you're too outward with your sexuality. Maybe you give it up too soon and that, that's right away. They're like, well, you know, my future wife wouldn't, wouldn't do that. My future wife wouldn't dress like that. My future wife wouldn't talk like that. And that was from Waffles and Stuff 30. Frustration and rejection for me. Hey, is this another woman? Yeah, that's another woman. Frustration and rejection for me. Frustration at meeting dozens of men I don't want to date because we just don't click or they are problematic. That's the, he's creepy. And then being rejected by the few I think I would be, a, the few I think would be a good fit. The rejection stings much more and is harder to recover from but the frustration grows over time. Once again, she's looking for men who are above her. If she's say, uh, I don't know, well, let's be generous and say she's a six. And that is generous. That's above average. That's better than, that's more attractive than most women, right? She's a six and she's looking at nines and tens and wondering why they're rejecting her. They're rejecting her for long, you know, relationship. Because once again, she's not in that category for them. That's crazy. The rejection stings much more. It's harder to recover from. And that was from 
Er herb forever. And the author comments, I know this won't sound romantic, but it's the truth. Dating at the core is like looking for a job. It's a numbers game. Aaron Clary. Sometimes you get lucky and meet the person who wants you just as much as you want them on the first try. More often than not, you will have to go through some rejection, failed dates, and even failed relationships before you find the one. And that brings me to my, again, puritanical viewpoint. Like, I just think dating as a, as a way to find a forever mate is, is the wrong way to go about it. Dating teaches people to break up. And every time the woman has her hopes on a guy, breaks up, hopes on a guy, breaks up, even if she doesn't sleep with them, trauma, trauma, trauma. And you guys know, you guys have seen it out there. And some of you married it. A friend who can be a lover is hard to come by. That's the next complaint. I mean. Oh, I want a mental, emotional, and sexual connection with someone who feels like they're my best friend. That's it. That's been the most difficult aspect of dating for me. Actually finding all of that in one person feels impossible lately. I had it once before and it didn't last. Really? What happened? Who broke up with who? I want all of those things and for it to last. I want, I want, I want, I want. How I've been dealing with this? Rumination, anxiety, and back and forth between going on lots of dates to totally isolating and not dating at all. She sounds stable. Right now, I'm going on like three dates this weekend and I'm already drained from it. Yeah, dating is not good. It's not good. I can tell you it's not good for women. It's really not. It, it takes, it's a... Uh, it's not the men, it's the dating itself. Just think, you know, 200 years ago, we'll just pick a round number. 200 years ago, there were, um, there was a pool of men, right? Small pool, two, three, maybe that, that father approved of and that you kind of knew from the community, from family and et cetera. And you might, I don't know, go on a walk with with one of them, have a conversation with a chaperone with with one of them, two of them that you were interested in as a woman. And uh, you got married. You didn't have all this experience with the men. And in this day and age, everyone's like, oh, no, you got to find out what you like and you got to do. Da, da, da. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because all you do is get traumatized. You get rejected. You get rejected. You get your hopes up. You get rejected. It doesn't. It's not good. For a woman, if the goal is for her to one day be a good wife to a man, to have any of that, to compare any of it. I know that we talk about body count a lot. It goes deeper than that. No pun intended. I. <laughs> so she wants this emotional, blah, blah, everything. So she said, anxiety, going on three dates this weekend. And I know some of you men are like three dates this weekend and I'm sure it's different men. I wonder if they know about each other. I wonder really if I could interview 20 JC 20, uh, I would love to find out what happened with the one that she had all that with. Because if you had all that with a man, it wouldn't end. I, I feel like she would say, Oh, he did this. Oh, he did that. And I had to break up with him. No, you don't. No, you didn't. Anyway, next one. Oh, that's not the next one. He's going to, that's the only one we get on this. Okay. He's going to comment for all the men complaining about how hard finding a relationship is. This right here is the secret to attracting and keeping a woman enamored with you long-term. You have to be her friend who is also her lover. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Uh, it's not simple because how she thinks you should be her friend is more like how her girlfriend is her friend. So 
I know you got to watch out for that. Yes, you want to have a strong friendship with the man, but you have to allow him to be a man. And that's different than a friendship with a woman. Sometimes we, as men, overcomplicate what should be simple. Actually, I don't find that to be true. i sorry to disagree with the man that wrote this so much, but do you guys think that it's the men that overcomplicate things? Do you? Or are men pretty simple? Instead of trying to game her into a relationship, focus on genuinely bonding and connecting with her like you would with a friend. But don't just act friendly and leave it at that as that will surely end you in the friend zone. I don't know that you should take this man's advice. Instead, show her you are also a sexual being and don't be afraid to let her know your intentions. Did you guys understand that advice he just gave? Because I think that, I don't think, he, I think he's confused. Anyway, in closing, he says, as you can see, modern dating is no easier for women than men. Women face the same challenges, such as finding a compatible partner, getting rejected, stiff conversations, terrible online dating profiles, people with ulterior motives, and having boundaries ignored. That being said, some of the challenges are more specific to women. A good example would be getting inundated with unsolicited sexual offers or being spoilt for choice on dating apps. I know some men might view it as a positive. You know, how you present yourself is a, is a big uh, factor in how people approach you and what people say to you. So some of these women need to look at what they're putting out there and see if maybe that's why they're getting the, the reactions they're getting. Like if they're getting all these offers for things that are too sexual or too fast, maybe you're communicating that, ladies, with your dress, with the way you act. I know you don't want to be slut shamed, but um, take in the signs if you don't want to be viewed that way. They, women want to dress how they want to dress and act how they want to act, and they don't want to be accountable for what that communicates to the men. And then they're mad with, with what they're getting. And it's like, it's, it's simple marketing, really, you know? And that's the problem with chameleons because they figure out, oh, the men don't want that. The men want a more wholesome whatever. And so they can start putting that out there and lie about body count, et cetera. You have to watch out for those. But some of them haven't got the memo at all and don't care. And they just want to be blatant, you know, they want to have their cleavage hanging out everywhere and skirts so short, they bend over, you see everything. Like, you know, like, what are we going to do? Like, of course you're going to be treated that way. It's We need to stop playing pretend with everything. Oh, but let's not forget that there are also male-specific challenges that women might view favorably, even though the reality might be different like the privilege of being able to sleep with many women without being shamed or being able to go on any date without fear for your safety. Yeah, that's not true. Men have to deal with, I mean, women use weapons and, and um, their biggest weapon is false accusations. He goes on, but I digress. Dating shouldn't need to be a competition for who, it, for who has it worse. The bottom line is we all face challenges. So it's high time we kill this notion that women have it better. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that at least at the end, he's right. Uh, women, women don't have it better necessarily because men are finally saying no. Men are finally saying, I don't, I don't, I don't want with the body count. I don't want, you're not a keeper, you know? So women shouldn't have it easy. Why should they? But they also are wanting to be the victims of everything. This is all about, oh my gosh, the men are the problem. The men are the problem. They're never looking inward. They're not having, they're not being accountable. So 
they're just complaining and expecting the men to fix it. And I'm glad that the men are saying, eh, no, what do you guys always say? The juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's not. And makes the women so mad. Oh, well. Oh, well. Men are allowed to have their standards. They're allowed to have their expectations. And at the end of the day, the people who are getting the short end of the stick are the average men because they don't get to have their families. They don't have the same options in dating at all because these women are all looking for the higher, you know, eights, nines, and tens who are out of their league. Their heads, these women's heads have been filled with these expectations and this whole Disney idea of you deserve the world, princess. You know, you can have it all. And those are just lies. That's just not how life works. And it's interesting that women are so ready to believe it because they believe basically what they want to be true. And um, it's it's going to hit them. There, there's going to be so many leftover women. There already are leftover women who are like, wait a minute. I thought there would always be endless options. I thought I could always pick. I thought that I was sort of promised this Prince Charming and you're not. And you probably met him and rejected him. And he was probably an, a fantastic, wonderful, flawed, average man who's not perfect because nobody is. And sweetheart, you're not either. And you're not gonna be. You're not gonna be happy in a relationship all the time because that's not life. But you make a decision to stay. You make a decision to love somebody for better or worse. And that means worse, it can be worse, you know? And you, you, you gotta be ride or die or nothing at all. Why bother? You know, you, you, you gotta be ride or die or nothing at all. But these women don't, don't get that, so. They won't, if they don't get it, they're not going to get it. And I'm, you know, I, I, I don't feel bad. I, I don't, it's hard to feel sympathetic because of the way that they have treated men over their years of all this dating and the men they've overlooked. So I, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult for me to take their side in any of it. I'm sure there are individual accounts. Um, can't think of any off the top of my head right now, but, uh, no, no, the women are, the women are creating the mess of, of all of this. This was not a problem 200 years ago, hundred years ago, 70 years ago it was not a problem. And the whole idea of, oh, women were in these horrible relationships and they didn't have choice. That's a lie. It's all a lie. And, um, they, they absolutely were much happier back then when they didn't have all this, when they didn't have the freedom to make all these stupid choices. <laughs> anyway, you guys, thank you for um, navigating this fun article with me that basically says the same things we already know, but these women just are not learning it. Oh, well, for them, I hope that you are feeding your soul today. I hope that you are protecting your peace Thank you for understanding that I was not feeling well yesterday. I feel better today. Uh, still not all the way there, but you know, these days with the MS, you, you get the fatigue, you get weird, you know, symptoms. It's just part of it. And uh, I'm doing well for 24, well, my whole life of progressive MS, but especially the last 24 years. So I, I think I'm doing well. Uh, relatively speaking, and I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm grateful for you guys. I really am. I just, I don't think you, you know how grateful I am for you and uh, how often I think of you guys. I think of the ones that I know from emails and the chat and comments. I also think about the ones of you who don't comment because I know that you're there. And I, I just want you to know 
that you're important to me that I think of you. And I really, really appreciate you. You guys help me have a reason to keep, to not give in to the MS, to just keep, you know, going forward that, that this is important. I even had more women come in the comments and, and basically, uh, announce themselves as allies. And that's so important. And if you're a woman and you're watching, please comment or email me because it it's going to take the women to turn it around. Think about it. It, it kind of took women to get this whole thing started and they had a bunch of men behind them, you know, to bring in feminism. It was only 4% that wanted the vote. So we women are the only ones that, that the other women will listen to. We are the only ones that can call those women out. The, you know what I'm saying? And, and we may not be perfect and we may not be all aligned, but we can see the Amber Herds of the world to pull a name. You know what I mean? And we need to call it out and we need to stick up for the men. We know that there are good men. We know that most men are good. We know that. And we need to voice it. And when we finally, if we finally can get heard, there's an army behind us of men that want, you know, that want to speak up, but they, but they can't get it started. We have to do that. It's our responsibility. So if you're a woman and you're watching, you know, let me know because uh, it's uh, encouraging. And let me know what else, you know, it, what else I can say or, or what else you think would be helpful would be good. Thank you for letting me go on that little spiel right now because I've been wanting to say it. So anyway, to close, I love you guys and I will see you on the next one.